So relationships are based on the interplay of male and female, active and passive, yin and yang. There's no relationship possible with anybody ex in other terms than that. I mean, and there's always an active and a receptive in any relationship. Whether it's a student and a teacher, a parent and a child, or two lovers, they only can relate when one is active and, or male and one is feminine or receptive. Right now, I'm the active person, meaning I'm the male person, and I'm teaching. And you're listening, so you're receptive. Now, if at the same time that I'm teaching, you're teaching, we wouldn't hear each other and we wouldn't, under, nothing would happen, we wouldn't be relating. Okay? So any relationship requires that male and female dynamic. That's the definition, actually, of a relationship. So you can see when it comes to a relationship between two people, the very important things in each person is how is their male dynamic? How is their female dynamic? If a person's male dynamic is off in their chart, or if their female dynamic is off in their chart, at that moment they become incapable of relating. They just can't, or they become unable of it. They can't do it. Okay? So that's why the most critical thing to examining a chart in the context of their ability to be happiness and be happy in a relationship is the health of their male and female sides, their masculine health and their feminine health. Okay? Now, there's a stereotypical idea that men should be men, or men are men and women are women, which means men are active and women are passive, and men should lead and women should follow. Now, that ideal is based on the fact that the son is more important to the man, the male side, because that's what, why he's born as a man, and the moon is more important to a woman, which is why she's born as a woman. But a man still has a moon, which means he still has a feminine side, and a woman still has a son, which means she has a masculine side. So there's nothing wrong when two people relate in the other way, where the woman's the initiator and the man's the receptive. The very same way, I might be teaching a class and we're having a relationship though. And I might say something and you might raise your hand and you might say, I have something I wanted to add to that. And I would say, okay, let's hear it. At that point, you would become the masculine initiator and I would become the receptive. But the important point is we still have a relationship. In a relationship between any two people, that change, where one person shifts from being the male to the female, and the other person shifts from being the female to the male, or from the receptive to the active, is a healthy part of the relationship. And in doing so, people are able to explore and um, enjoy themselves completely, both sides of themselves. So, when we look at the chart, we always want to look at both the male side, the son, and the female side, the woman, to see how healthy they are with that. What kind of relationship can they have? If someone has a really healthy male side, but a damaged female side, they only can relate from a male point of view, in an active way. Okay, on the other hand, if someone has a healthy female side, but a pained male side, they'll only be able to relate in a feminine way, which means as a receptive person. But then there's a whole other part of them that's limited. Okay. And these days, more and more people want a dynamic relationship that's changing, where sometimes the male's the male, and sometimes the woman's the woman. And sometimes the male, the man, wants to be more in the receptive role, and the woman wants to be more in the active role. So they want to do that change, where they're actually having a more, we can say, full-fledged partnership. Now, at the foundation of that, though, the male's always going to inherently be more male, and the woman's inherently always going to be more female. Otherwise, they wouldn't have the biological bodies they have. And a lot of the reasons we have certain needs is simply because of the biologies of our bodies, the hormones and endocrine systems that we're born with. So in a moment of crisis, the relationship will work best if the, male is ma if the man is male and the woman is female. And in a moment of... Um, in the moment of... or on the day-to-day -day basis, it wor a relationship usually works best when the man is the male and the woman is female. And then as a foundation of that, they swap over. The same way, because I've studied astrology a lot more, I have more to present than, say, someone in the audience who studied astrology for a year. 
So on a foundation level, day-to-day -day basis, I'm going to usually be act naturally in the male role and that person would be more naturally in the female role of receiving the information. But every once in a while, that person, even though they've just started studying astrology, is going to have a good insight and say, hey, I thought about this. And then all of a sudden the tables would change and I would be on the receptive end and they would be the teacher or the male active person. And it would work really well. And so relationships need to adapt as necessary based on, you know, what people are actively doing together, what they're spending their time doing. But the foundation is we want the male, men need to be stronger in their male side and women need to be stronger in their female side to have a good relationship. So what that means is in a man's chart, the sun and the sun card is more important than the moon or the moon card. And in a woman's spread, the moon and the um, moon card are more important than the sun and the sun card. Okay, but even if their moon card's good if, and in the woman's spread, if her sun and sun card are off, that will still cause or come constraints in her relationship. And in a man's chart, even if his sun is, and sun card are good, if his moon and moon card are, are damaged, that will still reduce the happiness he can have in a relationship. But it's better than having it the other way around. Okay? So when we talk about masculine and feminine energies, we're going to first approach it from the point of view of talking about men as masculine and women as feminine. But everything we say about a man as a masculine person you know, is also something the woman has within her as her male side, which is just going to be less dominant, generally speaking. And everything that we say about a woman's female side is also something a man has, but it's not as strong as his male side. So the needs that, um, that women have, men also have those needs, but not as dominantly. And the needs that men have, women also have, but not as strong as the needs they have based on their female side. Okay? So, to understand all that, we really have to understand the masculine and feminine energies, keeping in mind that male and females have them both, and just to greater proportions, okay? So to understand male sides in the context of any astronomical system like this cards, the easiest thing to do is just to study the sun. The sun is the all-male planet. He rules one sign, Leo, which is a male sign. He doesn't rule two signs. All the other planets other than the moon rule two signs each. Like Venus rules Taurus, a female sign, and Libra, a male sign. Every other planet rules a male and a female sign. Because those planets, while having a gender, the fact that they rule a male and female sign shows that they do well and they can do well in both worlds, active and passive. But when it comes to the sun, he just rules one sign, Leo, a male sign. He's all male. He's 100% male. He's the embodiment of masculinity. Okay? The moon only rules one sign as well, which is Cancer, which is an even, and even numbers are feminine, an even feminine sign. And so the moon is completely female. The moon is the embodiment of femininity. Okay? And it's the relationship between the sun and moon that creates life on earth, that makes things happen, that makes creation possible, basically. And it's like that, in, like I said, in any relationship on earth with anybody, whether it's a friend, it's that relationship of an active solar person or an active, a person acting as an active solar person at one moment, with somebody being the lunar receptive person that allows for the people to create something together. The same way that the sun and the moon and the heavens create life on earth, neither one of it could do it by themselves. Okay? And so this is, um, so really, we want to study the sun and the moon and really understand them. They're the cornerstone of people's ability to have a relationship. And that's really surprising to a lot of people because most people, when they look for relationships, they just look at Venus and the, and the seventh cusp and they go, oh, those are the things that govern your love life. And those, that's true, those things do govern your love life, but your love life is an extension of your abilities. And your, the bottom line on your abilities is based on your sun and moon. And if your abilities suck, if you're an absolutely messed up, psychopathic, insane person, 
you're not going to have a good relationship with anyone. Whereas here for a solid, sincere person who knows their mind, knows their heart, and is consistent and steadfast and persevering, you're going to be able to have a good relationship. And those qualities are determined by the health of the sun and moon. So, we have to understand these planets more than anything else in the chart when we start looking into relationships. Okay? So, there's an astrological text called Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra. It's like one of the most important um, Sanskrit textbooks on astrology. And there he gives physical descriptions of the planets. So, for the sun, he says, Honey yellow eyed is the sun, square and radiantly pure. O twice born. That's who he's talking to do. To he's talking to someone named O twice born. Okay, of pitta nature, intelligent, masculine, but little hair. So that's what the sun looks like. So that's basically what male energy looks like. The masculine side of ourselves looks just like that description. Now that description is a physical description. People who have the sun on their, you know, in their ascendant card, or the sun in the card of their of, of their ascendant lord, they will tend to have this appearance. Their body will take on a more square profile. Their shoulders won't be rounded. They'll be a little more squarish. Um, they'll be pitta. They'll be more fiery in constitution. Um, their hair will tend to thin a little more or be less. Um, their eyes will lighten up in the context of their racial characteristics. Okay, so if they're, you know, an Indian person, they'll have slightly lighter eyes. If they're a blue-eyed person, they'll have lighter blue eyes. So whatever their racial background is, it'll lighten up their eyes a bit. Um, because, you know, honey yellow-eyed is a light eye color in a culture like India, which is probably a dark-eyed culture. And so you actually see this, these physical qualities in the person more. Now, for our purposes, we're not that concerned with the physical qualities. We're concerned with what these sutras, what this line means on a deeper level. So all things have a physical meaning and a, also a psychological and spiritual meaning. For the purpose of relationships, the important thing is the psychological meaning. Because relationships are an interplay of our psyches, our male psyche, our female psyche with somebody else's male and female psyche. That's the interplay. So what do these really mean psychologically, what's really important? How, how does it make a person behave? What's this description have to do with about their behavior and the way they are and what their needs are? Well, first of all, the sun is square. That's his shape. When we think of square, I always think of watermelons in Japan, okay, where they grow these watermelons on this steep hill. And the watermelons are going to roll down the hill. So what they do is they put square boxes over the watermelons, and that makes the watermelons grow square so they don't roll down the hill. So they stay where they're put. They're, they're steadfast. They're steady where they are. That's the nature of the sun. That's the nature of male energy. It doesn't just roll around. The wind doesn't blow on it, and all of a sudden it, it gets blown across the ground like a ball. There's forces exert itself against it, force of gravity like those watermelons. But any other force against a square body, a square body stays stable. That's why we may have our houses in a square shape. We don't build our houses with a floor like this, even though that would be a lot of fun. Just think, how we, I could be skateboarding like while I'm teaching class or something. That would be fun, but that would be a stupid way to build a house, right? So, it's the sun that has a square body, and that shows that the masculine side of our psyches, the male side, is steadfast, it's consistent. It's not easily moved. A little breath of air going the different direction doesn't make the sun shift direction. So the male side of us is the side that is going down a path, and even as things come that push us off that path, that square steadfastness of the sun helps us keep going down the path, helps us keep being, keep being consistent and stable. So this makes the male side the stable side of our psyches. Okay, Men embody that more than women. In fact, between the two hemispheres of the brain, the right and left halves of the brain, males have a, have a smaller junction that actually delays the communication between their two sides of their brain as compared to women who two sides of their brain can communicate more instantaneously. What the impact of that is, 
When a man feels an emotion, it takes him longer to change course based on that emotion. He's more square, he's more steadfast. Whereas if a woman feels an emotion, that emotion will more, rap more quickly override her previous intention that was made, that previous decision that was made by her male side. Okay? So there's really a difference in how men and women react because of how their, the two hemispheres of their brain communicate. In the male-dominated human men, that squareness of the sun manifests as, it, as them not shifting as quickly due to different emotional um, needs or wants or any other feelings. Okay? So as something comes that causes them to have concern, they're still more able to keep going down the road that they've already planned. Okay, they have that stability and steadfastness. So that ability to stay a course, to stick to something, to draw a line, those are all embodiments of the sun. I'm staying right here. Okay? Now those are the qualities that are really important for getting anywhere in life. Okay, to be successful. You gotta be consistent and stable, right? Doing everything whimsically because your mood shifts gets you nowhere. So anyone who's successful uses that square quality of the sun, whether they're male or female, to maintain a consistency of action and effort and focus and desire that yields that resu result. Okay? And on the end of the day, it's consistency and steadfastness that more than anything else determines the success we have with anything in life whether it's our love life, our financial life, our career life, our ability as an astrologer. And that's why, at the end of the day, the thing, the plant that's most important for getting anywhere in life, or having anything in life, is the sun. Because that's the plant that gives us that steadfastness or consistency. So that's a very, very important masculine quality. Okay, um, Anyone that you feel you can rely on, that's always going to be there strong and ready to lean against, that person's going to have a strong son. Okay? Whereas the people you might meet who promise one thing and the next day it's a whole completely different story, um, they're going to have a weaker son. Okay? Then the sun is honey yellow eyed. And this is a really important part of the sutra, I think. Because when we think of male energy, we don't think anything to do with honey, because honey is sweet. Right? It's sweet. And we don't really think of masculine energy as being sweet or kind or any of those kind of nice words. In fact, the sun is considered to be a cruel planet in astrology. And here he's given honey yellowed eyes. The fact that they're yellowed, yellow is a sign of nobility. Okay? Yellow is also the color of the sign of the sun, which is Leo. Okay? But it's a sign of nobility. The sun is noble. That's one of the key things about the sun. He, um, he tries to do the right thing. Now, he's honey yellow as well. That honey, what does that mean? Well, he has a sweetness to him. The sweetness of the sun comes out that he never harms anything weaker than himself. He never harms anything to get where he wants to. That's not a direct attack against where he's going. If he gets challenged, if he gets attacked, yes, he'll defend himself and do what he has to. But he's never going to harm things weaker than himself along his path. He's never going to rape and pillage. He's never going to destroy, destroy thousands of acres for wealth. You know, he's not going to destroy things when it's healthy. All these powerful people who go through raping their way through lives, they have bad afflicted sons. The real son doesn't do that. The real son is always sensitive and empathetic than anything less able than itself. And with anything less able than itself, it always reacts with kindness and sweetness and care. And it will nourish those things, the same way that honey is a super nourishing food. Okay? And then it's a noble planet. It always is trying to do the right thing. People with good strong sons really strive at their best to do the right thing. Do they always do them? No. But they always try their best. Whereas people with bad sons they always, on deep down inside, have this feeling that they're going to be unable to do the right thing, that they're going to screw up somehow. Their self-esteem is so low, the idea of doing the right thing is, rarely even enters their minds. Okay? Then the sun is radiantly pure. Well, in life, on Earth, the sun is a purifier. 
through oxygen, you know, through that sunlight, those UV rays, they purify things. It kills mold, it kills fungus, it kills bacteria. It's healthy to get sunlight on your body to purify your body. The sun's the great purifier. He represents the agony in the body, which is the purifying fire in our system. It keeps us healthy and vital. And also in his actions, he's again pure. He tries to do the right thing. Okay. Now, one of the things about purity that we often forget is that due to fate and the entwinings of fate, people are always going to get caught up doing the wrong thing at some point. Even in myth, all the great, all the avatars in mythology and stuff, they all do something wrong. Like Lord Rama, a famous Indian avatar who's um, considered to have manifested from the sun, shot someone in the back with an arrow. Totally a taboo thing to do. Why that guy was fighting someone in, in a duel? He shot the guy in the back with an arrow. It's like really a bad, evil thing to do. Okay, but he still was pure through that because. A person with a good son, even though they find, might find themselves in circumstances that are distasteful, where the only solution is to do something that, they, that is wrong, they won't let it stain them. They won't carry it around with them forever. They won't let it ruin their lives forever. You know, it'll, they'll eventually be able to purify themselves of the remorse, the guilt, the shame, whatever it is, that doing nothing brought upon them. Okay. And so eventually people with strong sons are able to become, purify themselves of those things. One of the great burdens that people put on themselves that ends up ruining their life, ruining their relationships, ruining the people they're with, ruining the things they try to do, ruin them advancing in life, is that when fate comes in its really weird twisted ways and puts them in a situation where they do something of deep regret, they never let themselves get over it. And they start drinking to forget about it. You know, whereas a person with a strong son, even if they do things with great regret, somehow they're able to keep going. They don't hit the bottle, they don't start taking the drugs, they're, and it might take time, but eventually they'll work their way through that guilt and become purified from it. So, that's a very important quality. And people who have that quality will also be able to see that ability in others. So they'll also actually be able to support that ability in other people. You'll get through this, you know, you're not useless, evil, da da da, because of this bad event. So that nature of that son and, and people with a strong son is that not only can they purify themselves while the shit they've been through, they can also, through association and friendship and relating with other people, help those people purify themselves of it. The same way that the sun radiating out there will help purify you if you go out in it and get a little bit of sun to help kill the bacteria on your skin and underneath your skin. Okay, get some good UVs. Okay, so that's an important part of the sun too. Now he's a pitta natured person. Pitta is fiery in nature. That means he's active. He likes to get things done. He likes to use his energy for a purpose. That's, those are all male qualities. He's not one to waste time. He wants to he wants to achieve something. He's ambitious. But again, he's honey yellow eyes, so he's deep down, he's never going to hurt something out of that ambition. He's never going to rape something out of that ambition or damage it or destroy it. Um, Pitta feels good when it succeeds in something. That's a quality of fire. So the, uh, the male side, the sun side, feels good when it does something good. When it succeeds in something, or does something right, or does something productive, or does something good, it feels good about itself. And in the end of the day, feeling good about ourselves is what's important. And so a strong son person is able to do more things that cause them to feel good about themselves than a person with an afflicted son who struggles in that and is in great need of that. So the male side is the side of us that does something good and as a result of that feels good about itself. Our male side does that. The female side doesn't do that. We'll talk about her later. Then the sun is intelligent, which means the sun has the ability to figure things out. It has the ability to think things through in a square or rational way, in a common sense way, and come to an intelligent and correct conclusion. In astrology, in these sciences, a lot of people like will give intelligence to Mercury and wisdom to Jupiter. 
But the foundation of all of our thinking ability, the foundation of all of our intelligence, actually resides with the sun. Okay, the sun is the intelligent planet. And people can have a decent mercury, have a good mercury, and they can have a quick mercurial active mind, but that doesn't mean they're intelligent. Just watch what they do with that mind, and it'll be like tons of stupid stuff sometimes. So, it's the sun, the male side, that gives intelligence, that rational intelligence that can think things through to a proper understanding is all given by the sun, the quality of our male side. And then the sun has little hair. Well, people that have a pitta or fiery constitution created by the sun tend to have less hair or thinner hair or lose their hair earlier. Um, and the sun is like this, it has little hair. What does that mean psychologically? Well, hair is the one part of our body that we have no control over. And here's the sun, he has little of that. Which means the sun isn't really interested in the things that he doesn't have control over. He's not as interested in those things. Gossiping, that's not a male side thing. Okay? That's why they always make jokes about women gossiping. Gossiping is more a female thing, you know? So the male side isn't one to concern itself about things that aren't part of his kingdom, part, aren't part of his world, or aren't part of his business. That's the quality of the sun. If he's not in control of it, or the short hair, some, the short hair symbolizes less attachment, less things in his life that he's not in control of. There's always the, some fringes of things surrounding your life that you're not fully in control of, that you have to dabble with. But the male side does as little as that as possible. Okay? Um, and the son likes to have things under control. That's, that little hair also shows he likes having things under control. Okay, likes, he likes to be able to move things, shift things, make things work the way they need to. Just like our bodies. We can easily move our bodies in lots of ways. Whereas the hair, we can spend all day long doing our hair just the way we want. We go outside and the wind blows and it's gone. Or we lay down and mess it up. You know, it's just, it's really something we can't keep under our control. Whereas if we decide we want to have our arm like this all day, we can keep our arm like this all day long. That's what the son likes. He likes things that he can be responsible for and take care of. And he's just not interested in investing in things that are beyond his control, beyond his business. Okay? And so it's the male side that's able to look at something and say, oh, this is way beyond my capacity or my control. It's just going to be a mess if I get involved with it. I'm just going to have a bad hair day with this thing. So I'm not going to involve myself with it. So that's a, that's a, a decisive quality of, a, of the sun, of the male side, of recognizing what it can control, what it can take care of, what it can manage, and not really biting off much more than that. Okay, maybe just a short crew cut or something, you know? But not like all this, you know, this is trouble from the male's point of view, okay? Um, people with troubled sons um, will oftentimes involve themselves in things beyond their ability, beyond their control, and things that um, are never going to be able to be real realizations for them, okay? Um, and it's, it's part of that intelligence of knowing what per, and accurately accessing oneself, that yeah, I can or can't do this. You know, having a proper evaluation of one's abilities and desires and will, instead of having a fantastical idea of it. And you'll see people with afflicted sons tend to have ideas um, that are just sort of fantastical from the point of view of where they're at in their lives. Okay? Alright, then um, another thing about hair is that, and this is one of the very important things about the sun or the male side, hair, like we can take our hair, like we can take a strand of my hair, which goes back like a couple of years now, and we can, you know, examine my health and dietary problems and how often I smoked pot, which was never, but if I did smoke pot, you could see, oh, six months ago you smoked pot by studying my hair. So you can see a record of a person's past in their hair, okay? Because there's impurities going through the hair depending on what we do to our bodies, and um, weaknesses are in the hair depending on what we don't eat. And we can also do that with our nails, which are similar to hair, a covering of our body. But with the hair, they, they actually have a record of our past. That's why sometimes in spiritual traditions, when people get initiation, they just want to shave it all off. 
And that's like just getting rid of all the old so that they can proceed forward with their life. At that point, they become the sun, right? Little hair on their he heads, okay? And um, that nature of the sun, the nature of the male side, is to not be concerned with the past. Sure, shit's happened, bad stuff's happened, I've been horrible, I've done wrong things, but I'm not going to let that keep me from going where I'm going next. And that's the quality of the male side of the sun. Someone who doesn't let the past keep them from when they need to go in the present. Okay, whereas people with weak sons will be held up by the traumas of the past. So a person with a strong son who had a rough childhood is like not letting them bother that. They're not letting those past pains and aches and, and um, dismissals and low self-esteem batterings affect them. They're going to firmly move into the future. Whereas people with afflicted sons, every little tragedy in their lives is just another reason for them not to go forward. They're literally weighed down by all the negative things of life. Okay? So this ability gives the male side the ability to always move forward. Okay? And not be held back by the events of the path. Whatever they are. So if somebody, if you know, somebody's married and their partner dies, if they have a good strong son, they won't let the death of that partner hold them back unnecessarily from going and living life. Where some people, when their partner dies, they are unable to maybe move forward. Or some people have a really bad breakup at some point in their lives and then they're unable to move forward. Or some other tragedy that makes it hard for them to move forward in their lives. The son doesn't do that. And if a person has a strong son, they won't be held by the adversities and pains and traumas and anything in life, the guilt, the shame they've encountered. They have less hair, which means that past holds them back less. Okay, they say, whatever happened in the past, it doesn't matter because I'm going into the future. I'm not going into the past. I'm going this way, not that way. So whatever train wrecks are back there, they really don't matter at this point. They matter a little bit, that short hair, that short mourning period, the six months or year to overcome the grief of losing a loved one. But it's not like hair growing down to your feet, where, you know, which takes a lifetime, where a lifetime later a person is still depressed over a, a past event. That's not a quality of the sun. That's not the quality of male energy. Male energy is to mourn, have a little bit of hair, get through the past, and move forward. Okay? Okay. And then, of course, the sutra says the sun is masculine, which is the critical thing. Everything we've talked about here are masculine qualities. These are qualities that the sun gives us. Everyone has these qualities. Now men have these qualities and are in greater need of these qualities to build a good life than our women. Okay? And the reason that is because men biologically have a more sun-centered body. They have more of the solar or um, hormones. Okay? They have a more solar build, right? Men tend to be more square. Men have heavier frames. Um, bones are ruled by the sun. Okay. Um, women, on the other hand, are more like the moon. They're more round. They're more rounding. They're curvy, right? Okay. So there's a difference in biology um, between the planets. So the moon gives the woman her biology when she goes into puberty, and the sun gives men their biology when they go into puberty as those hormones shift to that solar or lunar side. And so, everything we said about the sun are male qualities. They're, they're the important qualities that men need to have a good life. Okay? If in addition to that, a man also has good lunar qualities, they'll not only have a good life, they'll be able to enjoy that life at its fullest. Okay? Now, if a woman has all these male qualities, but she can build a good life, but it won't mean anything to her if she also doesn't have good lunar qualities. In a woman's chart or spread, the moon and lunar qualities are more important because those are the ones that are going to make the critical difference in her existence. On top of that, having good sun qualities will make her life even better. Same in a man. It's the solar qualities that are going to make the difference in his life. But not having the lunar, he would miss something. So ideally, the, the people that are going to enjoy life the most, have the best lives, have, are going to be both strong in both sides. They're masculine and feminine. Both those sides will be healthy. But if one is bad in a man, 
you want the solar side good and the lunar side not so good. And in a woman, you want the lunar side good and the solar side not so good, if you have a choice. But ideally, you want them all good because they're both critical planets. And a person themselves, we ourselves are a relationship. A person himself is a relationship. Okay? Every person is a relationship between their male and female sides. A person's constantly thinking about something, doing something, and then contemplating it and think, seeing how they feel about it. Okay? So, like I'll go on a run, and as I'm going on the run, I go, gosh, I feel so great. See? That's my male and lunar side at the same time. If I went on a run and didn't feel a thing the whole time, that would mean I didn't have a lunar side. But you can't do something without seeing how you feel about it, right? So, people are constantly a relationship between their male and female sides. We ourselves are. So for people to be healthy, we have to have both those sides healthy so they can work together. Otherwise, the person might find themselves doing something and going, why am I doing this? I feel horrible about this. You know? But yet they're still doing it. So it's like this imbalanced relationship where the male side's getting his desires met and the female side's like pulling her hair out in misery. Okay, we can have that relationship within ourselves. And we also can have that relationship with our partner. And if we have it with ourselves, we're going to have it to some degree with our partner as well. Okay, we're, it's going to be a reflection of that. So we really want both the Sun and Moon, the Sun and Moon cards to be nice, to have the optimum best relationships. But for men, it's definitely more important to have the Sun good and the Sun card good. And we're going to talk all about how to check that. And, and what we need to know about that, um, you know, how to judge those cards for this purpose in future videos, okay? But the next video I'm going to talk about the woman's description. Thank you.